right now, the, the COVID crisis means that they have to completely reinvent the way that they create their relationship with their audiences and how they fulfill their mission to bring culture to, to everyone. Welcome to the Agile Digital Transformation Podcast, where we explore different aspects of digital transformation and digital experience with your host, Tim Butera, Content and Community Manager at Agile Drop. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm joined today by Sylvain Moreau, Chief Sales Officer for the French digital agency Access Open Web Services, which specializes in the Drupal CMS. In this episode, Sylvain and I will be talking about digital transformation in cultural institutions with a special focus on the recent project for Paris Musée. Welcome, Sylvain. It's great to have you with us. Would you like to add anything to the introduction? Hello, Tim, and thank you for this, this introduction. Um, I'm really happy to be with you in this program and be able to share my experience with your audience. Um, maybe I could add that I've been working in the internet industry since 2001, uh, when I completed my studies and created a company uh, with my close friends. We were four um, at this time. And now this company makes 25 people live and we specialize, as you said, in big Drupal sites for institutions. And uh, we are also now part of a bigger French group named Access Group, uh, which employs uh, 300 people specialized in many fields of digital transformation for companies. So thank you for the introduction. Sorry, I can, I can say clearly that word. <laughs> It's okay. No worries, Sylvain. And thank you for the extended intro. Uh, so you de you definitely have quite a lot of experience working in the digital, right? And you probably have quite a lot of interesting digital transformation insights for us today. So let's talk digital transformation in cultural institutions. And my first question would be, what are the key things that cultural institutions need to consider when they decide that they want to digitally transform? First of all, I think uh, the key uh, the key factor to to success in digital transformation for this this institution is a vision and benchmark. Because uh, before going through all these processes that we know and uh, that we will discuss later, uh, first of all, these institutions they need they, they need to question themselves about what what is their vision for their institution uh, in five years, ten years. It it may be like some it may sound like obvious, but if you do not have this vision. Uh, especially in the cultural field, uh, you can go nowhere. And second thing is the benchmark, because uh, these institutions, they are not alone, and uh, there are many museums, there are many cultural institutions, and many cultural medias, and uh, things are moving fast. So uh, the best way to to get the, the digital transformation right is to benchmark um, your your competitors, in the cultural fields, you can't say competitors, but the, the, the people who do like you, and then decide what where where do you want to go. Uh, the second thing uh, maybe would be uh, to list your actual resources, uh, all the things that you have and that you want to share with your audience uh, and your elements inside your information system, because. We, we are talking about digital transformation, but it's a transformation and there always is something already digital when it comes to museum, to cultural institutions. So you must make a list of these and see how you can use them, how you can broadcast them. And uh, this is the, the second thing. And then the, the third point uh, would be the, the most important one uh, is to think about the user experience, what we call UX. That means uh, questioning yourself about who are your targets when you are a cultural institution. So when you are a museum, it's obvious that the main target is uh, your visitors, but it can go beyond that. Then you have to ask uh, what a visitor uh, needs from us uh, before his visit or during his visit or after his visit. It's, um, you must think about all the experience you will have with your digital digital resources. And then you must think which online resources 
like artworks, like educational resources, uh, do we want to offer to our audiences? And how do we produce them? How do we protect them? Because uh, you have uh, uh, copyright concerns when you are working with artworks. So all these kind of questions need to be asked and uh, they, they need to be asked uh, from the direction point of view, but also from the user experience. And it's very important to uh, when you think about digital transfor transformation, when you are a cultural institution, to think about what your users want to have, like services, like information, like products, and then you can go through this process. Wow, that does sound like there's a lot of kind of details that you have to be conscious of, a lot of things that you have to plan in advance. And, and basically, it's like, what it sounds like is that cultural institutions need to take into account basically almost everything else that, that a typical company would have to, but then in addition to that, also stuff like copyright for artwork, as you mentioned, and probably that balance between the stakeholders, kind of the, the direction, the management of the museum and the visitors, or in, in the example of museums, this balance is probably a really, really important point here, right? Yes, and and they also need to think about their mission because mm -hmm. uh, what uh, what is different uh, between a company and a, a cultural institution that is that a cultural institution? It's not a, a business. It is a business because they have to have figures and KPIs, but uh, it is also uh, uh, an institution uh, which has a mission and, and they have to think everything about this mission mm -hmm. and what it means uh, when it comes to digital experience. Yeah, thanks for adding that. That's a really good. That's a really good point. Thank you. And uh, how do such institutions, so cultural institutions, benefit from undergoing digital transformation? I think that the, the main point, from my point of view, uh, is that they are making uh, culture, culture in general, uh, more accessible to their audience. Uh, that they they would never have thought of, because. Um, you can see that in many ways. Right now, uh, museums, for example, because they are the main cultural institutions that we can think of, um, they come from another century, let's say the, the 20th mm -hmm. century, to be, to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how, can, uh, how do, do they benefit from digital transformation? We can quote some, some examples, like they, get, they can put all their resources online. And that means a lot because before that, uh, you had to go to the museum, you had to go to its library, you to have access to all this knowledge and to all these resources. Now they can just broadcast them online and it's, it's very, very important. Another, another main point is being able to offer a digital experience at every moment uh, for the visitors. Uh, and, and that's what I said before, every moment is like, before going to the museum, you can uh, consult the website and see how do you access, what are you planning to see, um, how are you going to eat, how are you going to trans transport yourself over there. And then you have to think of a user experience when it, uh, the visitor is on site. That means virtual reality, uh, information about the artwork, about the artworks, be um, you can have an interactive map that you can follow everything you can think of about digital experience and then you have to think about digital experience uh, after the visit uh, when you you've come to the museum you've seen the artworks and then what will you do when you come home uh, uh, how do you keep the link between the museum and the visitors uh, that's another important point and the last thing, maybe the most obvious one, is uh, man managing people flow easily. You can think of online ticketing. Uh, and this is now a, a real trend, uh, which has been um, going on since uh, for, for a few years. Like uh, two years ago, you could buy, uh, when you went uh, to the Museum Louvre, Louvre Museum, Musée du Louvre, uh, you could buy your ticket online or you could buy your ticket on site and um, f um, since uh, since last year they stopped selling tickets on site and the only way to go to the louvre museum uh, would be to buy the ticket online 
because they they were not able to manage uh, uh, their people flow anymore. So um, now uh, now it's the same with uh, with the COVID and uh, with the limitation of visitors. But uh, every museum and every cultural institution now is able to manage its flow because uh, every visitor has to go through online process to book its visit. So maybe it's. You can think it's a bad thing, but for the museum and for the cultural institution, it's a good thing because you can really handle uh, the people you have on site and you can maximize the, the sales you make uh, from one hour of opening. Well, but also since, since people have gotten more used to purchasing stuff online this year because of COVID, I think that even for the users, you know, will soon come to a point where when purchasing tickets online will be more convenient and the user experience will probably be so good that, that it won't be a problem anymore for visitors. Yeah, right now it's, it's like the, the, the poor side of the digital, digital experience in museum, mm -hmm. but it is mandatory, so you don't have a choice, but every museum is working on uh, improving in its online experience for buying tickets. Right now it's, it's really crap, as we can say. <laughs> Even for the Louvre or, or big museum in France, they are very late about online ticketing, but they do not have a choice, so they, they will improve that very fast. Yeah, as you said, they do not have a choice. If, if the pandemic and the lockdown continue for some time, you know, that's pretty much the best way and the only way for them to go forward. Yeah, true. And since we already started talking about COVID, let's just, let's just jump ahead to the COVID-related question. So uh, how would you say that the COVID crisis, everything that we've experienced this year, the mass digitalization, the move to digital experiences, how would you say that all this has affected the need for, for cultural institutions to digitalize, to undergo digital transformation? Oh, I think it, it has made thing, things uh, obvious. Um, mm -hmm. They need to digitalize or, or they will close. Because uh, before COVID, they were asking the, themselves about when do we go, when do we put our resources online, uh, when do we uh, accelerate uh, our uh, online ticketing process, all that kind of stuff. Uh, of stuff. But now they, they know that if they don't do that in the, in the coming years, and I'm, not okay, I'm not talking about the de uh, decade, I'm talking about one year or two years, mm -hmm. they, they will die. Because right now is a, is a period of uh, uncertainty, so we don't know when it will end so they have, maybe they have a, a few months to think about the digital strategy because they uh, right now the, the visitors are limited but they need to do that now because uh, otherwise uh, when everything reopens the world will, will have changed a lot and for for them it's really true for example, I was uh, just this morning on radio, on the French radio, there was the, the director of the Musée d'Orsay, which is uh, the other big Parisian museum with the Louvre, who was interviewed. And she was saying that since the, the COVID crisis, they lost 70% uh, of the visitors. Wow. So it's very huge. Uh, when you think about it as a business, it's uh, it's horrible. Uh, so you, you you can think they lost all the um, the revenue uh, uh, which is generated by the entrance, but they also lost, and we we do not think about that. But they also lost the fees uh, for on-site restaurants and shops, mm -hmm. and for certain museums, I can think of one of my customer, which is the Cité de l'Architecture which is located just near the Trocadero in Paris. They make money from the entrance, but they also make money from the, the restaurant that is located inside, uh, which has a nice view on the Eiffel Tower. And if people don't come to this restaurant, they don't have enough money to make investments. Uh, that's the, the fee from the, these restaurants that are used to, to invest. So it's a it's really sad situation uh, for for these uh, for these institutions so uh right now the, the covid crisis it means that they have to completely to completely reinvent the way that they create their relationship with their audiences and how they fulfill their mission to bring culture to to everyone because uh it's really their first mission you know the Louvre museum it was created to to bring the 
culture to everyone and it's the case for almost every museum they, they want to to show the artwork and share them with uh, many people so right now um the the best way uh, the best way for the this institution is to think uh, how do we uh, accomplish our mission and it's not only selling tickets for uh, on-site visit it must be greater than that and we have to think about many ways to to bring the culture and after that we will think about making money on it but i think that if they don't have a, the, the the way of generating people and relationships uh, with them they won't be able to make money uh, at any point yeah it's also a bit paradoxical right because you probably need a certain budget if you want to properly digitally transform and since seeing how they lost a lot of revenue both from their visitors and and the extra fees which you pointed out that probably makes it much much harder for them to like properly di digitally transform and to implement uh, any new technology that they might um, ascertain as kind of optimizing the experience of their users yeah that's true, but you, you you need also to think about these institutions are uh, companies that are too big to fail. It's not because they are too big, but because they they cannot fail, uh, especially in France, where culture is a is a major part of our country culture. Um, you you cannot think about the the Louvre museum uh, getting closed or any museum uh, getting closed. But for a small private museum. Yeah, this is really annoying because these ones, they don't have many public money and they, they have to think really fast and they maybe need to invest so on some digital transformation that they cannot afford. So it's really a problem for, for small private museums. Mm, yeah, yeah, th that's a good point to add because I, I, I also don't really picture the Louvre going out of business because because of COVID. So yeah, good good point. Yeah, and, and may maybe even if the MoMA in New York, I think even if, if it's private and it's an American museum and it's a, in the land of capitalism, I think the the, the MoMA will never close. But it's also a good example because the, the MoMA, uh, like many American museums, uh, is ahead of uh, many uh, U European or at least uh, French museums. The digital experience offered by major museums in in the USA is better than almost every digital experience uh, offered by a museum in France. Well, but but you you seem to be doing quite a lot of work, right? You've worked with cultural institutions a lot, and you've probably you probably helped in a lot of their digital transformation efforts, and probably also seen a lot of kind of recurring DT trends throughout your work. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, we have many customers uh, in the cultural field, and we've been working with them for many years. The first category of them uh, being museums. So we work with uh, uh, an institution and we will talk about this particular project later, uh, which is called Paris Musée, and uh, which is a group of uh, 14 museums in Paris that are public museums and that are free to access. Uh, they have many artworks. Uh, we also work with uh, uh, one museum called the MNHN, uh, which is the, the Museum of um, Natural History. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's uh, a natural science. And this is, uh, in France, it's, it's a reference and it's really a, a beautiful museum. Uh, we also work with the Cité de l'Architecture, which is the, the Museum for Architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have this, this museum for customers. We also have institutes. Um, our main customer in this field is uh, Institut Français, which is a French government institution, uh, which mission is to uh, broadcast French art uh, abroad in uh, every every part of the world, and uh, which also is to uh, to help uh, foreign artists uh, to emerge and to be known in France. So it's very uh, it works on both sides, and it's it's really a nice mission and. It's, uh, they have um, they have uh, bureaus in every country in the in the world. We also work with uh, national centers for art, uh, which is uh, the, the main one is called CNAP. It's for modern art. Uh, we work with uh, French ar architects, 
we and we also work with public medias with cultural mission you can think of uh, RF, rfi um, it's a international uh, broadca- radio uh, mm-hmm. broadcaster uh, maybe you uh, you already listened to it in Slovenia. Uh, you can f- um, you can uh, think of France Culture, which is the a national public radio uh, with only chat and cultural uh, uh, shows, and uh, also with Arte. Uh, Arte is a French German uh, public uh, channel, TV channel. Mm-hmm. And finally, we work with uh, also pub- public libraries, big ones. Uh, like people like so uh, i think that uh, w- you will give uh, every link on uh, on the podcast details yep. uh, and these are really really nice institutions and you you've asked me about the, the major trends what i can quickly think of is um, uh, the first thing and it has been going uh, for uh, like 10 years uh, is the digitalization of artworks so it's a, it's a long process because you have to go in every museum and to take uh, high resolution pictures uh, you have to to make the inventory and to to transform it into high definition data but uh, it's it's really what needs to be done uh, to put all this uh, culture online the, the digitalization of artwork and resources and when you have done this the new trends are uh, you can develop new online experiences uh, and new online experiences, the, the field is very vast. You can think of uh, uh, virtual museums. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've talked about KNAP before. They have a, a website called knap-n.fr, uh, which is a virtual museum. You can, you can enter uh, keywords and it will bring every artwork uh, that you can think of online and you will go through a, a virtual experience just like you would walk through a museum. So it's really nice and uh, it's a digital experience. You can think of um, high resolution panels uh, for uh, like uh, uh, masterpieces in museums. Uh, they are very highly defined, uh, digitalized, digitalized, and you can see them on your screen. Uh, just you can see many, many details from the paintings or sculptures. And it's very fascinating. And then you have these online experiences, but you also have open data. And this is really the next the next step, because uh, all these artworks uh, they need to be accessible accessible uh, to everyone, uh, whether it's free or not free. But you you need to put it put it online. And open data is really a, a great movement in museums or around the world. And also uh, the next step of open data is open content. Uh, and I will talk about that uh, for Paris Musée just uh, just after uh, talking about the, the digital trends. Another digital trend I've seen is uh, online selling, not ticketing. It's very nice, but also online selling of uh, of uh, newspapers, of books, of uh, art books, of catalogs for um, for exhibitions, and also um, uh, museums are going through uh, online fundraising and crowdfunding. Like for example, when they they want to to restore an old artwork, they can put some online campaign, just like you see on uh, on these uh, these big uh, digital platforms uh, of crowdfunding, and you can uh, you can pay money to to restore the artwork. So this is really going. This is really working, and uh, now main museums like the Louvre or other big museums uh, they did some campaigns uh, which worked to restore some major artworks. I can also think of uh, digital link with audiences because uh, when you talk about art, it's really about emotion that people are, are feeling when they are, they are seeing uh, this artwork. So uh, you really have to think about the, the, the link you create with your, with your online visitors uh, with emotion. So this is uh, the main part of uh, the major trend, uh, bringing emotion to, to the websites or to the applications uh, with art. And uh, the, the last thing which is evolving very, very fast is, um, uh, I don't know if it's a French work or <laughs> it's it translatable in English, it's called Figito. Um, it's, um, it's a mix between physical and digital. It's f- oh, yeah. digital. 
Oh yeah, and okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> right now, these these cultural institutions they are developing digital experiences, um, like uh, for for example, for sculptures, they are digitalizing artworks. And then you can download the 3D 3D plans and print uh, some major artworks on your oh. on your 3D print printer. So it's really cool, uh, and it's really the link between the, the digitalization of the of the works and the, and the visitor. Uh, right now, they are developing uh, virtual reality experiences. Uh, you can put a, a virtual a VR uh, helmet. And then you can go through a, a virtual uh, uh, exhibition of artworks. So this is really, really, really cool. And uh, you can think also of moving, uh, moving museums. That means museums uh, that are coming to you when you are living in the countryside, when you are living in a remote place. Uh, now you can have a museum experience uh, going into small cabins that are located in, in remote places. We have some experience, experiences like this in France, and it's, it's really cool. And recently, I've discovered um, a foundation uh, which is called Art Explorer, and which mission is to to bring the, the art to everyone. And they have some cool ideas uh, that can sum up what I've just said. Is like uh, they are building a, a boat, a race boat, uh, a catamaran. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if if in English it's called catamaran, but it's a, a race boat. Um, and then uh, inside this boat, you have a, a digital museum uh, with a major uh, major artworks like paintings, which are very very uh, highly digitized. And you can visit this museum when you are living in a small fish fisher town, uh, maybe in uh, in Morocco. And this project is to, they, they are building this boat and uh, two years from now, uh, it will be uh, sailing across the Mediterranean Sea and going in every single small place uh, where people have never seen a museum and they can, they can see an artwork uh, just staying in their village. So that, that kind of project is, uh, I think, is the next digital trend in the cultural institutions. Oh, that does sound super interesting and super cool. And, and it kind of really epitomizes their mission, right? It's, it's making culture accessible to everybody, no matter where they are, no matter how they interact with culture. So it, it really seems from, from these examples that you've, just, that you've just pointed out, it really seems to me like cultural institutions are one area that's really, really taking great advantage of all modern technologies such as AR, VR, 3D printing, and kind of this mixing of physical and digital spaces. Really, really cool. Okay, now let's talk more about uh, the project that you've already mentioned. Uh, that, that was your recent project for Paris Musée, so Paris Museums. Can you describe it a bit more in depth? Can you maybe talk about some of the key requirements and some yes. of the goals and maybe some of the main outcomes of the project? Yeah. First of all, it seems like a, a recent project, but uh, we've been working with uh, Paris Musée for five years uh, uh -huh. now. So uh, it was recently completed, if I understand correctly. Yes, oh. one phase wa was recently completed, but uh, uh, to complete that phase, we did a lot of work before. Mm -hmm. And I can say that uh, Paris Musée is uh, our favorite customer uh, because uh, it's an ambitious customer. They have a, a very high ambition and they already uh, had it when we met them five years ago. But they also had a, a realistic digital strategy. That means uh, they, they knew where they wanted to go, but they knew that they were a cultural institution and that it can take a bit time uh, at that time uh, to, to go from no digital transformation to a, a complete digital transformation. Uh, and they also have a, a culture of uh, hard and productive teamwork with us. So it's very nice working with them. But anyway, um, we we answered to an RFP five years ago or six years ago, and the the project was to to make the the collection portal. That means uh, they they had um, three hundred thousand artworks uh, that were digitalized. Uh, they had data and they had a, a software for that, and they they wanted to put all these uh, artworks online. 
uh, with a, a, a great search, search engine. And the, the first goal of that was to, to give um, the, the researchers in the, the field of art and culture access, access to all this data that they, they can do their researches. Uh, so we we had to to build uh, that portal uh, first of all in uh, in terms of um, data structure and uh, formation architecture uh, for artwork is very very complicated because you you have many taxonomies uh, like maybe uh, hundreds of them and it's very uh, the, this uh, this work was very important then we had to to import. All, all that data from their information system, which is a bit archaic, uh, to the website. And then we had to develop the, the UX and the UI of the website uh, so that it was usable and it was attractive. And I, I think we, we did a, a good mission on that. And then we launched, uh, we launched this portal, which, cause, which is called uh, Paris Musée Collection. And then you can search uh, in uh, 300,000 and it's growing every day, uh, artworks. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot because um, you, you can access all the artwork uh, for free. But when you think of that, you also think uh, when a museum is closed, and it was the case for the Musée Carnavale, which is a one big Parisian museum, and they have like... Uh, 30,000 artworks or more. The museum was closed for one year or two years, but all their artworks uh, were accessible online. So oh. that means a lot because the, the mission, it can, it can go on and it continues even when the museum is closed and it, it goes on like 24 seven. And it, it was really, a, um, it was really a challenge for us to, to be able to offer an online experience and to bring all this data uh, very simply for the end user, and then we opened it to to the public, uh, not only to the researchers. To researchers, and after we've done that, the the customer wanted to to go further, and he said, "Okay, we have a, uh, we have a, this uh, search engine, but I want to go open data. So, uh, and I want to go open content, uh, and which was really the big challenge that we." We completed uh, just before the COVID in January uh, of this year. And the, the cool thing that for this project, they said, OK, we have uh, like one, 150,000 uh, artworks. We are sure that we, we can put them under the CC Creative Commons CC0 license. Mm -hmm. And then we put them online and everybody uh, in the world can uh, use them for commercial and commercial and non-commercial use uh, for free and uh, this was uh, so we needed to to build an api for uh, open content and for open data and uh, and we needed to 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 handle all the the downloading aspects and uh, the, the end users uh, agreement and now you can go on the Paris Music Collection portal and you can search uh, uh, an artwork and there are new cool features like you can search an artwork by its color by um, oh, nice. if, if you want to to have a blue and red and, and pink images and you, you want to use them uh, to to build a pixel art picture of your girlfriend, for example, mm -hmm. uh, to make her present, and and then you can print some uh, some big pictures on on a wall. You can do that, and you can do that uh, not having to worry about the license because uh, it's under Creative Commons. Uh, so so we are very proud of this work because it um, it's uh, in France it's uh, the, it's a premiere. And uh, in a worldwide, the, we are among the first ones. So that's really, um, we are really proud um, because we, we share the, the values of our customer, which is to bring the, the artwork to everyone for free and uh, art is for everyone and, and, and you have to share it. And we also did the, the main institution portal, which is like a, a normal website uh, saying all the exhibitions going on uh, with an agenda and, uh, and job offers and something like that. So this is really a, a normal work for us, like a, an institutional website. But the, the main project is the Paris Musée Collection portal. And it's really uh, something we are very proud of, even 
four years after its its uh, launch. Okay, and and what technology did did you use? Did you use Drupal for for all the functionality that you talked about earlier? Yes, yes, yeah, I forgot because uh, uh, we, we stayed very big, big picture, but uh, we built the, the collection portal on, um, on Drupal 7 because at that oh. time there was no Drupal 8 and it still is on Drupal 7. And when we started working on uh, open content and uh, the API, open data and open content API, uh, we, we, we decided to, to move to Drupal 8. So right now we have a situation where uh, half of our work uh, is on Drupal 7. Uh, and the, the main portal, the Paris Musée collection is on Drupal 7. And the, the technical new stuff is built uh, upon Drupal 8. Oh, nice. And Drupal is probably a very good choice for, for such a project where you have a lot of, you, you mentioned previously, a lot of complicated taxonomies and uh, like the need for really good data handling. And I mean, from what I from, from what I know about Drupal, Drupal is just the perfect tool for that. Yes, true, and it's also the perfect tool for bringing uh, usual uh, usual functionalities. Because, uh, as I said before, uh, this portal is open to, uh, to researchers, so then they can create an account and they can bookmark their researches. They can uh, make notes on artworks, and so all this is included in Drupal and, and is, uh, uh, it's more scalable and you can develop new usual functionalities that needs to be authenticated on Drupal. And this was really the, the two main uh, key, uh, uh, key decision makers, the, the ability of Drupal to handle very large and complicated data structures, mm -hmm. and also its ability to, to bring user, uh, user uh, personalized uh, features. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very good points right there at the end. Thanks for, for adding that, Sylvain. You're welcome. Well, that's all for my questions. Is there anything, any closing remarks that, that you'd like to give before we finish? No, I, I was very happy to, to, to be interviewed about these cultural uh, projects because um, it's the... I think it's the root of the uh, internet missions, if you think uh, if you think of it, because cultural institutions, uh, their mission is to broadcast the knowledge to to everyone, and that was the the goal of uh, internet at first. You would go to internet and you you could access uh, every part of knowledge you want to you wanted to, and and that is really exciting when we are doing uh, our. A commercial job like everyday job we are a company we have to make money and uh, it's it's normal but when you when you remember uh, uh, what is the mission of uh, of these museum and cultural institutions you are very proud to work with them because it uh, it it adds sense to to your work and everyone in our team is very happy to work with these customers yeah great point sylvan thank you if people want to reach out to you or if they want to learn more about you, where can they do that? Oh, I think that the, the simplest way is to contact me on LinkedIn. Okay, I'll make uh, sure I will, to... I will give you my, my LinkedIn account. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to add that in the notes. Thanks for speaking with me today, Sylvain. It's been really great learning more about Paris Musée and, and all your extensive expertise with, in working with cultural institutions. That's all for this episode. Have a great day, everyone and stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to check out our other episodes, you can find all of them at agiledrop.com slash podcast, as well as on all the most popular podcasting platforms. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes, and don't forget to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues.